All right, everybody, welcome back to the 2022 PSR Marathon. My name is Iron. I'll be hosting this sec, this uh, sort of block section of, of the marathon today. Uh, we've got a really great task coming up for you guys right now for Pokemon Yellow, featuring a very special uh, alt main. Some of you may know what it is already. Uh, <laughs> so I'd like, just like to introduce uh, two very special uh, guests here. We have uh, the creator of the task, Ranger Squid. Hello. Say hello, Ranger. And uh, we also have Ty Kevin eighty three. Hello, that's me. All right, you guys can uh, take it away, and uh, looking forward to seeing this great task. All right, hi everyone. So welcome to the Pokemon Yellow Alt Main Glitchless Percent Task. Uh, I have been working on this for way too long, and this is the most recent version of it. So. Honestly, I'm just going to get started on playing it because we have plenty of time to talk in general. And just so you know, this is not the normal world record task. This is a little bit different. All right, so Iron or Jordan, whoever is doing the timer in three, two, one, go ahead. There we go. All right, so uh, this has been a really, really interesting ride for this task to be finished. And um, we have a lot of really, really fun and exciting stuff that normally doesn't happen in a task that often and had to be really investigated in order to find the most optimal path for this. So, also, we are going to be generally underestimate. Uh, I won't tell you, I won't spoil anything. Because no one else other than Kevin and myself have seen this. So, Kevin, if you wouldn't mind explaining to the uh, to the community what in the world a TAS is, because you're better at this than I am. And uh, I'm going to actually start. Uh, uh, before we get into the whole what, of the, what a TAS is, you, you just saw us add a bunch of characters and delete. What that's going to do here is gonna, it's going to set up memory such that when we go into the battle Pikachu and Oak catches the wild Pikachu, we get this extra big double wipe. Usually in that battle, there's a, a single wipe all the way around in a circle, but it's going to be two half wipes. You'll see right here. Yeah. So that that is because of our adding and deleting characters from the rival main. And that was discovered by me as part of the no safe corruption tasking. But for the larger point of like what a task is, what we're doing is we are stepping through in an emulator frame by frame for approximately 360-odd thousand frames. Probably closer to 400,000 for Ranger Squid's alt main to that. But I don't know the exact number, like I said, so we'll, we'll find out the exact length of that. Anyway, point is, you just step through every single frame to figure out the optimal frame to play every one of your inputs. It's not like a live run where you just hope that your inputs are at the right time. You, you know every single frame uh, that your, your inputs are going to do what you want them to do, so... You can be very precise, and because of the level of precision, you can actually control the RNG. So we're going to do all sorts of crazy strategies in this run because of our ability to control the RNG perfectly and know what's going to happen in advance. And coming up here, we have our first rival fight, so hopefully it goes really well. Uh, maybe we get some early XP, we get through with Pikachu, and maybe we get something that can actually handle Brock, because right now, if I remember correct, uh, oh, oh, oh. Well, a Gen 1 miss, that doesn't seem good. Oh, hold Two Gen 1 misses? Oh. Why are we using Growl? Ranger, what's with this task? Why are you using Growl? Um, no. so, Growl is actually faster than having Thundershock Gen 1 miss because Thundershock is longer than Growl in general. And for animations, Tackle is actually faster with animations on than animations off. And so dying to the rival in two turns as well is uh, more effectively faster than killing the Eevee in, I believe, three turns, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, also yeah. The so level you, up at the end of the fight. If you turned the animations off before the battle, you could kill Eevee in three turns, but that would still be slower than dying in two turns. So we, we take advantage of X in an additional sense of being able to leave the animations on longer, and if we hold a button through all the text printing, they make it the fast text speed. But like, uh, like Ranger said, 
because we Gen 1 Miss Growl and don't get an animation, then we also can have the tackle animation on, where the tackle animation is five frames faster with animations on than with animations off. So, a question for you, Kevin, I guess. Um, yeah. Wouldn't a Mankey just be perfectly good for this task? Like, instead of Nidoran or anything else? Uh, Mankey really uh, has a lot of disadvantages after Brock because it, uh, it, it levels really slowly. It actually, like, there's a big problem with the experience curve in a lot hmm. of Pokemon. So, you, you want a Pokemon that has the medium-slow experience curve because the, that word slow uh, really describes how they end up leveling at the end of their experience curve. At the beginning mm. of their experience curve, medium slow is the fast experience curve. So up through level 50, it's faster to have that medium slow experience curve. And that that, dict that heavily dictates which Pokemon we get, and also the moveset of uh, Mankey is just garbage compared to like a Nidoran. <laughs> <laughs> so, sadly well, to say. Well, is Low very kick and right uh, Karate Chop are pretty oh, useful yeah. in, in uh, art setting, but not quite as useful in a task setting where you can always crit one way. So I think we should stop talking about Mankey because Jerry is very upset at uh, talking about Mankey. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's my dog Jerry, everyone. Well then... Yeah, he very much enjoys when people come to the door. So. What about medium fast experience curve in general? The medium fast experience curve, I think, is the one that Butterfree uses, and it's actually slower than the medium slow experience curve through sorry, level fifty, yeah. like I was saying. Oh, Iron, I'm sorry. Did you were you saying something? Oh, I was, I was, I was asking, I was saying, sorry, who? <laughs> My dog's <laughs> name is Jerry. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you, I thought you said something else about the uh, medium fast experience curve. Oh. oh. Um, also here, f if I remember correctly hearing this right, the old man actually glitches and fails to catch the Rattata, which in theory it should have only shaken once. There, The number of shakes just... is not the correct number for like what would be guaranteed to happen if it fails. Yeah. Uh, whatever you... Um, uh, or the, the reason I was explain is that the number of shakes roughly corresponds to your chance to catch a Pokemon... And so if it mm. if it shakes like multiple times, you had a pretty good chance of catching it. And if it shakes once, then you would you'd get a really low chance. And then like if it like misses completely, then that's like the it's a really really low chance. So that's, okay, well, it's, it's now... not random how many shakes you get. Hmm. Oh, now we're in Viridian Forest. Oh, we found a Caterpie. Okay, sure. That's a I good way of going. Guess. Yeah, I mean, level six Caterpie is a pretty decent main, right? Yeah, I guess so. We could try it out. I don't know how good it is. I think Metapod is okay enough to get to level 10 with. Also, we need know to the move it, Tackle the because we caught it as a, a Caterpie originally. Hmm, that is true. <laughs> well, hmm. How are we going to get to level 10, though? Oh, 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 oh god. Oh no. Oh no. I'm scared. Um Okay. Pikachu, kill it. Pikachu, please kill it. Uh P Pikachu? Pikachu? Well you that's a pretty good job from Pikachu. It's almost killed a yeah. Pidgeotto. D it's pretty rare range, though. That's like a one in a hundred chance to see a Pidgeotto uh, in the forest. Okay, okay. Pidgeotto, you're supposed to actually die from you're not supposed to kill Pikachu. Oh. Oh it, no, Pidgeotto! No. It hit Gus! And it's a critical! Okay. okay. We, we, we lived low. Okay. Wow. Whew. That was a close one, well, Ranger. Yeah, it really was. Well, now we get Metapod. I guess that's worth it. But, uh... We really gotta get some stupidly good luck. No encounters. Uh, Do we potions? Like... This could be kind of risky if we don't have any potions, right? I don't think we have potions. That's the issue. It's it's a good thing we're for a task, and we can predict literally everything that's going to happen. Yeah, also for context, uh, Metapod has base 20 attack. Sorry, base 20 speed. Caterpie has mm. base 35 speed. So it gets worse to find all these crits that you see on the screen. So anytime you see a crit, think, wow, this is just under a 5% chance of happening. 
Yeah. Yeah, uh, crits are it. based on the base speed of a Pokemon. So because yep. Metapod's base speed is so low, finding the max damage criticals here is a significant effort for being Ranger. Yeah. And now we're down to 1 HP. And yes, Metapod's eye is looking into your souls. Yes. I just noticed that for the first time. <laughs> Uh, Gif, no. Gif, we haven't investigated that actually. We should we should look at that. Oh, another way to improve this task, maybe. <laughs> it's an idea. There's some other like early things we're looking at too, Gif, but we we had a lot of trouble finding a um, a Caterpie that would also be at like early enough in the forest to then also hit a Pidgeotto encounter. So we've, we've had some interesting uh, decent manipulation we've needed to work on that I've had time for with getting married. <laughs> no, here luckily, so, so and we can get a, a red bar wild encounter catch in the forest. Which is significantly faster than not having red bar there. And also, our Caterpie DVs are 15 attack, 15 defense, four, uh, 14 attack, defense, speed, 14 speed, and 15 special, which uh, results in 14 HP DVs. Or <coughs> it's 15, 14. It's one of either 15, 14, 15, 15, or 15, 15, 14, 15. It's a really, really, really good Metapod slash Caterpie. If you notice the delay just now when the string shot failed, it's because that crit took forever to find. And it only does maybe, I believe, three or four damage at most. So most of these are continuously very tough to find in general. Yeah, some of this could be improved through like more bot automation of finding the RNG. Yes. But of course... This was about my third time doing it, and I was really, really tired of seeing this forest. And so I said, I'm done. Because I had to redo that forest section three different times after we found this uh, Caterpie. And then we get to Peter City. So, oh, okay, we're just gonna... Okay, we are just going straight to the gym. Yeah, we don't need that Mart, do we? I guess not. And now we get to... The insanity, as I call it. I'll just... I'm gonna let this play. I'm not even gonna talk. This, of course, being the light year guy fight, because the trainer says that we're still a light years away from Brock. Diglin has really defense. low defense, and we still take probably four or five hits. This is a fourth or a fifth here. Oh, wow, we did it yeah. in four. Yep. Sancho, on the other hand, I believe is a six or seven shot. And this whole time, we're manipulating Gen 1 misses of Sandrew's Scratch. Yeah. That's why I'm just letting it play out, because... <laughs> when I say that this is the hardest fight to make in this task... <laughs> the hardest fight, or the, the hardenest fight? <laughs> For Dumb. context, that was nine Gen 1 misses. Along with everything else in that fight, It it's about... It's, it's The odds are in the duo decillions, which is 39 zeros after the... Um, Holy smokes. 30, 39 de zeros after the decimal point. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's... Um, <laughs> It's and that's just low odds. It's just one fight is what's so amazing. Yeah, that the first time I had to do that fight, I genuinely rage quit seven different times. 
Also, look how fast we do Brock. I can probably, I believe it was about. And that move seconds. swap. That was a that was a smart move swap. Yep. Now another thing, I, I think that Ranger isn't quite as well versed in this one, but there's some cool stuff you can do with um, the when you choose to critical hit and not critical hit. So for instance, on that Geo dude, we could have done confusion and then critical confusion on the second turn, and it would have never gone from green bar out of the green bar into the yellow or red bar which uh, saves some animation frames. Yeah, I haven't redone this beginning part uh, since I made the first inception of it back last year, October. Mm -hmm. So it's been a quite a long time since then, and I just have refused to touch it until we <laughs> finally get that new Caterpie. Sure, sure. Um, was it? So the reason why we moved Confusion up to slot one is because we are quite literally going to spam it for all of Route 3 because it is that simple of a route. A lot of the Pokemon are really easy to beat now that we have a Butterfree with a special move. Ranger, um, I just noticed you took two extra steps. Though. Did I? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a fun one. We can fix that. Yeah, I mean, this is supposed to be a marathon run, not a, hey, here's how to improve your task for the next time. <laughs> it's okay, though. We gotta take notes as we watch it. <laughs> We honestly do at this point because also there's going to be um, about a hundred or two hundred frame delay up in the upcoming rival fight that I blatantly missed in my rework of it back when I was um, like, la uh, earlier. Last things? Not uh, so I did this version from Celadon onwards, but that was the 156. And in that, I still um, missed the delay. And I, I'd note about it in the verification. To be uh, fair, Juan, I worked on this with Ranger, so it's partially my fault for not double-checking some of the work. <laughs> yeah, he gave me the first eight minutes, and after that, it's an absolute mess. Quite literally, he did up through the um, Viridian Forest. And once he did that, I did the... Um, all the Gen 1 misses for the light year guy. Also, we get hit by the Rattata there because we need to stay at 1 HP all the way through Mount Moon. Because if we didn't get hit there, we would leave red we would lose red bar in either the Jesse and James fight or the the Super Nerd and we wouldn't have a reasonable way to get back red bar because everything there does too much damage. Because mm -hmm. they have poison moves, which are super effective against Bug in this generation. Which we'll talk about later on in this run. Um, that's a very, very important fact to remember. So, Peepo G, write this down. Make sure you remember that poison is super effective against Bug. Can you beat Pokemon fast with just one Butterfree? Uh... Juanly, I'm gonna be completely honest. I really do want to make a Mankey Tass for you. I think it would actually be really good. Yeah, it, I think it's a great like next frontier for all thing passing. We I think that and Rattata are also. Apologies, there. I have to close my door more. Rat has some really cool opportunities with like the like. Rat and in, rat into rat transition where you like go like you rush Banshin to get the 46 Raticate. So you could like wait, you could like oh. run Raticate up until and then getting a better Raticate. <gasps> wait, that's actually an idea though. That sounds really cool. I think. Well, that's allowed in an alt main. Is it, is it allowed in alt main categories to switch into the same Pokemon? <laughs> I mean, it, it's. I'm the first one to do it, so why is it yes? It certainly is within the spirit of the idea, I think. It's the I theoretical rule is that, that um, you sense. should, if you can't get it before Misty, you get it as soon as possible. But I think because you get the rat so early in like Route One or whatever, or whatever route you would get it on, I think it would be fine. Also, it would certainly be an interesting like playground idea for for past videos. That's oh, another thing I wanted to mention too while we're doing the uh, Mount Moon no encounter manipulation is Tass videos has a section now called the playground 
where they're specifically promoting this sort of tasking of more obscure categories, which is going to be a really great, it's a really great thing along with the Task Video site redesign that I worked on last year. The Task Video site is really blossoming with a lot of new participation from people like Ranger Squid. So I'm super excited to see uh, how that moves forward. Yeah, it's, and it also, if you genuinely want to learn how to TAS, um, there are plenty of guides out there on how to use the software. It's really, really user-friendly. It's not that bad. And if needed, myself or Kevin could easily teach you for an hour or whatever, and you'd probably really enjoy it. Uh, there are plenty <laughs> of Pokemon you could do. You could do red, blue, or yellow. Uh, for Gen 2, I would advise going to casual Poke player on that one, although... That's casual Kappa player in general, though. <laughs> the king of the using Kappa, yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Even in our group chat, he does not uh, send anything but Kappas. What's the status on, like, Gen 3 passing? Uh, you can do lots of really good Gen 3 passing. You cannot necessarily have them verified yet. But there's yeah. also some opportunities for that to improve soon because there's a lot of uh, new emulators for Gen 3 in the work. Mm -hmm. So uh, I I need to do some work on like the programming end to wire those up into BizHawk, uh, or like I could work with Casual Cook Player on that. But yeah, there there's a frontier where that will be possible. I've done some tests to make sure that like they do seem to be tassable in the sense like or verifiable in the sense that like if you play back a task you will always get the same, like, um, trainer ID from, from boot up. But we just don't have it, the emulator, like, mimicking that same trainer ID. I do want to also note that when we picked up the fossil there, I, I really wanted to, but the dome fossil is a good couple hundred frames slower than the helix fossil, and thus the helix fossil was chosen because it is superior, and I'm not losing a couple hundred frames on just that. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, switch tasking is a thing. You can do switch tasking, and we did console verification by tapping onto the V-Sync line of an HDMI out. We, we did a HDMI to VGA conversion to be able to tap the sync pin to see how many frames are being emitted from Switch. And then we were able to use that to do a uh, console verification. And here we are exiting Mount Moon. We are finally about to enter Cerulean City. And we've got some interesting stuff coming up. Yeah. Uh, cool find think... that we might be able to use in some tasks. If, if you need a menu early on in Cerulean City, you can menu while you're stepping up, like across the like uh, route transition into the city. And you can skip things like using a Moonstone's jingle or using a Rare Candy's jingle because the map transition sound change will override the Moonstone. Also, Swag PC. Swag PC! And the longest cry ever, Pikachu dying and being deposited forever. And then, of course, we get fast closing the PC as well because we're tasks. Another thing you'll see different here from the main glitch list task is we are not running straight to fighting Misty because we do that with uh, Nitto King primarily because we uh, we need to get the Bubble Beam TM so that we can use the Shake animation instead of Foreign Attack Flash animation. We do not have the ability to do that with Butterfree like using Bubble Beam, so we will get the experience out of the Nugget Bridge Trainers and Bill and all that, uh, Route 25, so that we can have that extra experience, so that when we need to fight Starmie with Psychic on Psychic types, it will be less difficult. So, we just taught Bide, because we just restored to full HP, and immediately we're back down to 1 HP like nothing new, and we just kill off a Spiro, like it's nothing, and we're back to Red Bar, <laughs> 
for I believe almost the entire Nugget Bridge in Route 25. I believe there's one other trainer that hits us. Otherwise, we stay at 1 HP this entire time. And yeah, it's um Bide Strats. Once I saw the move, I was like, this needs to happen because in some upcoming fights, which there's a small spoiler here in another version of this task that's being worked on. Uh, we use Bide in another fight after Ceru after Saladon City, which normally is when we get rid of the move. I realized that it was going to be a lot faster to get through one of the fights. Uh, so how do you make everything miss? So status moves themselves have a innate 25% uh, chance to miss from any AI. Doesn't matter who it is. If it's a regular move like Tackle, it's a it's 95% accurate. And if it's any other move, we just use the accuracy of the move to make it miss. Yes, and so then the, the reason that we're able to make everything miss is because everything is deterministic. Deterministic means everything is always going to happen exactly the same way if you use the same inputs. The task always uses the same inputs, and so it always gets the same outcomes. And we know this is true even on the original games on console because we have the ability to output those inputs and verify their behavior on the Game Boy Player using GBI. Yes, it's effectively yes. like you had one giant frame-perfect minute for the entire game. So yeah, a lot of fights coming up here. Uh, we have, I think, another four trainers on Nugget Bridge and like three or four more um, other trainers on Route 25. And so another point of notice is that we did not pick up the rare candy in Cerulean City and normally that's an RTA thing that gets picked up. Um, and that's because in the original one, I did actually pick up this one and the Mount Moon one, but realized after that it was very slow to get both of those candies and exchange just for a few extra levels early on to make some ranges better and so we decided i decided to cut those out as well as the upcoming elixir hiker as is normally called who blocks the elixir on route 25 because it was just a lot slower to do that fight it was about two to three thousand frames or i don't remember the conversion two to three thousand frames worth of time slower than just not doing the fight and being more optimal with my uh, PowerPoint management and everything. And to be honest, Lovesick, I would genuinely get a Shiny Butterfree if this game had it. I would make a run with a Shiny Butterfree. Gen 2 Shiny Butterfree task incoming. It's not a bad idea. Can the starters be shiny in Gen 2? Yes. I believe that's how people saw the set for shinies. I believe they can, yeah. I remember watching a very old YouTube video that Worcester did. He was doing runs. <laughs> and he got one. <laughs> yeah, it'd be pretty funny to do a, like a, a shiny Cyndaquil pass. That, I would love that. That's, that's, a, that's a people G write that down, write that down moment. Also, I don't think anyone can hear it, but currently my cat is scratching at my door, very upset that I locked her out of my room because <laughs> she's just yelling at me saying I'm not giving her enough attention. I um, <laughs> so Paige, I actually have like 85, 95% of a route, but when I revisited it, it just wasn't working well because I had too many high expectations for the game. And... I will bring in the cat later on if she gets very annoying. I just texted my dad to, to bring her away, so. Uh, I also did Butterfree alt main in both Sword and Shield, as well as Trade alt main Butterfree. And to be honest, those were my most favorite routes other than this task, of course. This task was an extremely fun time. 
Also, something I completely forgot about almost when I was doing this was uh, getting the Charmander here. Charmander allows us to have both Dig and Strength on the team instead of catching a Paris and Mount Moon. Stop with the cat and the cat does commentary. I mean, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, I wonder if anyone's wearing headphones right now because there's something going on if anyone's been listening to the stream. Kevin, can you just explain? Because you're so much better at explaining this. Oh, uh, yes. Um, Emetic, thank you for mentioning the amazing audio. So uh, I found this back in 2018. So oh, I can't believe it's been four and a half years now. Um, this is the fast options glitch causing this. So in the tasks, when we want to change our options, we can change all the options at the same time. By pressing the left button at the same frame, we press the A button to enter the option setting. And what that basically does is it, it causes uh, medium text speed to go to fast. It turns off animations, which we need to do those two things. But it has the side effect of changing the sound from mono to earphone 3. And that essentially takes a lot of the sound effect and puts them on one of the earphones where it puts the like music and other sounds on a different channel. And like your so my, one of them might be in your right ear and one of them might be in your left ear. And if you haven't played the game like that, it's very jarring to hear them on different channels and not all on one mono channel. Yeah, considering that I often have one ear off, and it's usually my right ear, that's where all the music is. So for me, very often I hear absolutely nothing except whatever video I am watching at the time while working on this, because all the music is in the right ear, and all I hear is maybe the bass of everything, <coughs> and then occasional cries while I'm working on stuff. Also, I have we a are question. finally through... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Iron. Yeah, this trainer, you had her look at you, and you got the exclamation point. That's something we don't normally do in earlier gen. Yep. Uh, it saves a step or two for the uh, task, I believe. So, yeah, that's just mostly just influencing what's coming down the line more than time uh, saving. We, we could look. We could relook at that one. It might be something that is wrong. Um... I'm not sure. Yeah. Also, swag Ooh, PC for the teleporter. Cell. Yes. <laughs> swag cell separator. I will let you know that every single time that we can swag PC or anything, we do it. The only thing we didn't do was swag boulders because swag boulder took way too long to try to figure out, and I gave up halfway through. So I just went yeah, with the normal swag route. Yeah, is complicated. Also, it's hard to tell like the correct frame to do the turn. Yeah. Here, we actually have to walk all the way back to uh, Cerulean because... The walk of shame! We cannot dig out whatsoever. Uh, we can't dig out of the bike. We can't dig out of the... We can't dig out of any building. We can dig out of the caves, but... Unfortunately, we have to walk at back. Yeah, this is so a yellow here, versus red difference that we have to be walking here. Yep. Not a task difference, necessarily. Now here, we actually center again. This is for one reason you'll see coming up very shortly. And it's for a reason. For, <laughs> for PowerPoint management is one of them. The second is a fun meme idea that we uh, explored earlier, and we're going to do again. And um, yeah. So this trainer is actually, was actually really annoying when I was working on this because the Goldeen just kept not cooperating with me while working on this. And yes, Shiro, this has been indeed the Butterfree, but it's better than the last one I did. Alt main Butterfree tab.
Also, as you were saying, as I miss the uh, the saving a few frames on the Geodude back in Brock's gym, I saved frames on that trainer there. So. Yes, that was a great example of doing the non-crit first, staying the HP in the green, and then the, when the crit happens, the HP bar never changes color, which each time the HP bar changes colors, you lose five frames in Gen 1. That is yep. uh, one of the interesting side effects of being in red bar that you have to uh, work out the time value of. Also, it is time for it's buy strats yet yeah. again. Sorry, what was that, Iron? Oh, you did the same thing on, on the start you as well. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Dang in green. Yep. And we are back to 1 HP. Ooh, the VAP! Unleash the energy. So we gained back all of our power points, and the only thing we used was about four confusions. So I think we're good for all of Rock Tunnel as well. I don't remember exactly what the... Very nice. Until like two or three years ago, I thought that PP stood for Pokemon power. I did not <laughs> know that it canonically was called power points. <laughs> I just hear also, PP and I just start laughing for, because I'm For tired. anybody who doesn't know in chat, if you use cut on grass starting in Gen 1, it cuts literal, like, tall grass. So you can, like, you can use, like, a ghetto repel by cutting the grass. Yes, Mag, it does indeed stand for uh, power points. I'm glad you have realized this now. Don't worry, everyone. We are giving uh, Pokemon lessons via the marathon. That'll be our new thing. Also, if you've noticed, the uh, Drowsy is not very nice. Like, at all. Drowsy is a tank, so that's having to use either Confusion, which we need to manage our PP really closely on, or Tackle, which it is very tanky against, and Tackle has terrible, uh, power. So, please f just remember the foreshadowing of Drowsy is a very tanky Pokemon, and you'll be reminded of that much a little bit later on. Yeah, it, uh... <sighs> I don't- I don't like Koga's gym. Koga's gym is not a very nice gym. Also, we pick up the full restore there without any sound because you pick it up really fast. And I believe that's all we pick up in this area. Also, we still don't have the bike, unfortunately, which would make this a lot faster. So we'll have to walk, I guess. <laughs> walking is good for our health anyway, though. Everyone should be walking right now. You'll allow copy passes and yellow task marathon runs. <laughs> I'll just do a run, a new new alt main every year. That'll just be my contribution to PSR every year. And Jordan, I completely agree. <laughs> exactly, bring quality. Just don't bring cheap quality. I will continue to try to write the best tweets for copy pasta material. <laughs> <laughs> and Matt, I completely agree. Also, uh, just for context, I believe Butterfree has base 50 attack, if I'm not mistaken, or base 60. So... Hence why Tackle is such a difficult move to use, because it does nothing to any Psychic types, and the only other move that we have for that is special is Confusion right now. And even later on, level 34, when we get Psybeam, it's not going to be doing much at all. Uh, 
I would like to request no mention of hops type matchups because that still haunts me from Sword and Shield days. And <laughs> please. <laughs> I would rather see Kawabunga dude everywhere. <laughs> Kawabunga. That's what people say used to say hi in California, right? Kawabunga? <laughs> I don't know him on the other side of the US, so. Also, we're here, we have our rival fight, which this is the second to last easiest fight for these. So this is a great example of a fight in uh, the Nitto run where we're able to use Thrash for like way more Pokemon than usual. Because we can guarantee that Thrash crits the Saiyan Shrew, but here we don't have Thrash. And so uh, we're... Uh, um, here we're just like confusioning really everything. Uh, Rest in peace, Sandshrew. No one likes you, and no one ever will. Thank you. Goodbye. You cannot oh, say attack us now where you are. Yes, exactly. No sand attack, no Gen 1 misses to deal with in this fight. Thank God. It's I amazing really that we can even you. kill Eevee in two hits of confusion, because like, unlike everything else in the early game, it actually has a decent special. Let me look at... Let me find it. Anyway... Yeah, the, um, I, I just really don't want to see Gen 1 misses anymore, I'm going to be honest. That's all I want to not see. Uh, also, the confusion with a crit is guaranteed. Guaranteed. Minus getting 227 hits, but regardless, it's very, very good odds. Yeah, cool. They're just really hard to find with a slower Pokemon, like... Yep. Caterpie, Metapod, and Butterfree because of the way that... In Gen 1, the chance of a critical hit is determined by the base speed of a Pokemon. So even if we're, like, heavily leveling a Pokemon, it's it's not going to get any better than, like, 5% on Metapod. And when usually in, like, the later Gens, it would always be 1 in 16. It's... Yeah, it's really bad. And then there's also the problem of the 1 in 39 rolls. And you often need to get a 1 in 39 roll for tassing to get that maximum amount of damage. So, you like, a lot of your early... Like every single attack you're doing in the early game is essentially a 1 in 39 and a 1 in 20 at the same time. So it's approximately, like, 1 in 800 every single time we're using an attack. Until around, like, uh, the Nugget Bridge point. Or maybe, like, Route 3-ish. So here we do a bunch of menuing. We... By the way, that's the uh, pause that uh, I talked about. Oh, yeah, about. there's a little extra pause that Ren did. Yeah, we could clean that up. Yes, I know. Thank you, Kevin, for letting me know. <laughs> uh, uh, you also should probably learn Fast Poof. You know Fast Poof? What? Okay, so when it says, like, 1, 2, 3, and Poof, when you're teaching a move... You gotta hold B during the word, or like during the little sound, and it, Jeremy, it makes. You gotta the... tell me this stuff when I'm doing this stuff. Come on, like <laughs> you never told me this. You it, never told it, me. It's this. a mainstay of the the RTA run. Like it, it's not a task specific thing. It's. Like, I it's never knew that. Yeah. So uh, today... like, <laughs> for all of you yellow runners out there, there's a thing called fast poof, and you should learn it. Also, Hit me up in the DMs. We had used our, uh, we used our full restore. We have Raichu fail growl. Fail again because I didn't learn how to manipulate by turns properly. Mega punch into mega punch down once again. This time to two HP. Mm -hmm. Two will kill. Yeah. So, uh, just for the sake of uh, describing it, the number of turns that abide or multi-turn move in general lasts like thrash is set at the beginning when you use it. So if you wanted to manipulate a three turn bide versus a four turn bide, you would need to check that memory address for how many turns it's gonna last when you use it at the beginning to see how Yeah, I'm gonna need to last. find that for my Lewis script for that. I'll mm -hmm. I'll talk to you about that. Also here, uh, if anyone wants to post the Rapidash copy pasta I give you full permission. Since I know that someone has it. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
This whole section I hate doing every single time. <laughs> I, uh, I wish that I could have been awake to be in, in the comments during my intro VOD. I, I pre-recorded the intro because it played uh, for the whole marathon. Yes, for marathon. Because it played at 6.30 a.m. my time. <laughs> and so I was not up to get to see the reactions. I never... Also, we pick up uh, the Squirtle here. Uh, the Squirtle is faster than getting the Lapras later on in the Sylph company. So, uh, it learns the same moves as um, Strength and Surf, so we don't need to worry about... What's it called? I'm trying to think of the words, I'm sorry. Another cool Lost thing you can do on. in tasks that's pretty hard to do is manipulate that girl to walk down so that you can walk up without, uh, like, having to, like, turn directly into the counter. And you can just, like, hold A to, to buffer into the dude. So normally this trainer, upcoming to last, is usually a run killer for Nido King because... You're low on HP, and Staz moves are an absolute pain. And not effective. Last... Uh, she is not affectionately known as the four-turn thrash girl. Oh, yeah, sorry. Four-turn thrash girl, yeah. Um, but for Butterfree, because all of her Pokemon are poison types, it it's just a free win. There's no going about it in <laughs> any other way. It's just free win, free win, free win, free win. And I... I laughed while doing this one because I thought to myself, ah, how many yellow runs died to this uh, horrible, horrible trainer? How many red and blue runs? And I just chuckled. Is it actually uh, super effective, or, like with the grass typing combo, or is it just say the word super effective because it's the first of the typings? Uh, poison type. Yeah, poison I, type, I just so. like grass type is normally effective against psychic. I, I'm like blanking. My brain Neutral. is killing. It's new. Yeah, yeah. Grass is neutral against Psychic, both cool. to and from, and Poison is weak to Psychic. Gotcha. So like, it, neutral, like neutral offensively. Yeah. In Gen One, there's a bunch of weird bugs where like something can be neutrally effective with the, all the math, but because it's dual type, it only uses the first of the two types to pull the like wording of whether it's super effective or not very effective. So you can have something that's like neutrally effective but actually says super effective, or vice versa. Also, I heard my cat just meowing very loudly there to my mom, saying she was very upset that I'm doing this marathon event. But I will bring it's her like in. Takiro, if you point. want to tash the task Ash percent, uh, by all means, I can help set you up for it. So, funny enough, in a group chat that we have for custom starters for Gen 2, one of the guys in there, good job, Mr. 2%, he was like... Let's do a task of uh, Ash percent. I'm like, no, just just no. <laughs> <laughs> or I don't believe. Well, actually, you know what we, you know what LSH, we should just release Butterfree right now. Mister Two, please explain yourself. I don't remember exactly what you said. Also, yes, Butter memes. Um. Yeah, I feel like we should release Butterfree now. Because it's just not going to be good once we get to Celadon. It's just going to be, like, mediocre at best. Oh, another bulky psychic type. Oh, Ash present my sister. Oh, yes, also, uh, Slowpokes are a nightmare. Foreshadowing, by the way. <laughs> I love watching the, the prequel trilogy. And anytime Anakin does something like dark side related, yelling, yelling foreshadowing, <laughs> or dark side. You know what? You're right, Randall. Not just rely on dumb luck. That's how you rely on smart luck. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. This Blind. will be a fun one to commentate blindfolded. I mean, I could. I could put on something. 
Do we have any votes for uh, blindfolded task for the rest of the run? <laughs> That'd be a great like donation incentive for like a GDQ thing, like for for the task. Blindfolded to a blindfolded task. percent. <laughs> it doesn't actually change anything, but well, the commentators have to wear blindfolds for an hour. Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, welcome to the Pokemon Yellow Butterfree Percent Task. Uh, hope you all enjoy. I don't know if we're lost or not, but I really hope we're okay. Um, seems like we're fine. Oh, we won a battle. Awesome. Well, hopefully we can get of uh, Rock Tunnel very soon. Also coming up here, we have... Um... We have the infamous hiker that quite a lot of people know about. And I stole this from Kevin's yellow world record task because uh, it was a really cool idea. So the two Geodudes are actually really simple to take out, but the Graveler is not a full one shot. And so there were two options with it. And Kevin cannot patronize me for this because I thought about it. It was either A, use confusion, and what's it called? Uh, have it go down to yellow bar, which would waste a few frames. Or B, use tackle, get the not very effective text into a Gen 1 miss self-destruct. We went for the second option because it allows us to find the Gen 1 miss much quicker. So no, you cannot patronize me for that one. I actually had to think about that one. Mm -hmm. You were talking about the, the Gen 1 miss, the... Self-destruct thing. Yes. Yeah, I, I love that strat. I actually uh, I learned that from watching a task that had been created around 2006 on one of the Japanese oh, really? releases of the game. Oh. Which that's a, that's another uh, frontier for tasking would be to do tasks of the Japanese versions to get like the the Japanese times. Also. Actually, coming up, I just realized we're going to leave Rock Tunnel and we have access to a lot of different things because we have access to uh, Celadon City. I wonder what we're going to get. So, this is... This pickup is completely useless, by the way. Ignore the fact that we get that Max Ether. It is only for inventory purposes at this point because... I realized in my reroute of this that it was not worth getting. So ignore that. From when we enter Celadon onwards is a brand new task that no one but myself and maybe Kevin if he got that far has seen yet. So there's going to be a little bit of explanations. To give you some backstory, also Roar does absolutely nothing in Gen 1 for Train of Battles. To give you some backgrounds, the original version of this task, the 1 hour, 56 minute, and 22 second version that's currently published, it gets us... It, uh, what's it called? In Celadon City, we go and get Hyper Beam from the game corner. And that takes about 9 minutes worth of time. <laughs> Sorry, I lost it at the copy post. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, so in the original, we do get Hyper Beam. I found out through a uh, through a person who commented on my published version that he said Hyper Beam is pretty slow. You should try doing something else rather than that. And I thought, all right, maybe I will in like six months or something. And he actually came back two months later with a sloppy version of this route or well, a different version of the route, but an idea without hyper beam. And it was five minutes faster sloppy version wise. And that just amazed me so much. And so I said, all right, fine, we'll work on this. And so I worked on the idea. It actually turned out really, really well. And this is the new version of it. Also, we pick up the fresh water here for the guards, which somehow they share one fresh water for all of the guards, even though the first guard sounds like he's chugging at least like three quarters of the bottle. He's going to share it with three other guards. And also, we pick up 27x specials, 9x speed. I love the fast. It's so fun to watch. 
Yeah. Because basically with those, it's, it's able to just tap up repeatedly every other frame. And we'll see some cool fast scrolls too in the fly menu. Some oh yeah, double the, input the, scrolls. Yep, the menus are gonna be um Yeah, menus are gonna be really, really fun. And also if you all feel like enjoying it, I do indeed have a Capri Sun because I'm five years old while playing a Pokemon Gen 1 game. I freaking love Capri Sun! Capri Suns are the best. <laughs> Where are you at on Lunchables, Ranger Squid? Uh, just the pizza one, honestly. Ranger, I don't like you, the others. you missed a step there. You can go in. You can go in the bottom one, and it will take you up a step. Okay, I know, I know. Okay, uh, we'll get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> I missed one step. It's okay. We can redo this five thousand times. <laughs> so here we get a long menu. Just enjoy it. Uh, what's really cool though with those scrolls is you can press alternating left and right as you're going down and it saves an additional frame compared to holding down as you normally would in the uh, RTA runs. And it, it's uh, called double inputting. It's a very fun little strat. Mm -hmm. And Randall, that is exactly what Kevin was just patronizing me about. And Grogear, Gro -Gear, yes, the elevator is faster. Actually, no, I'm sorry. The bottom tile is slower because you need to go up from the old man. So, Kevin, you are incorrect. While you can save a tile, you still have to go up and left anyway. Oh, we'll talk about it later. It's a yellow thing. Okay. I did mess up a lot, Randall. Don't worry. Oh, that makes way more sense now, Gif. I, I, I didn't think of why that would be until now. But yeah, I did also... Um, I did find the faster biking to the fly house there. Ooh, also, what's this? This looks, this, this is, is something deviation. you don't usually see. Yeah, this is very much a deviation. So this lady talks about her dead Pokemon in Pokemon Tower, and she's like, here's a TM for you. I don't need it anymore because I'm depressed and just gives you Swift, which I don't know why you have Swift, but here we fly back to lavender and we do a bunch of stuff once we enter the tower the flying back is faster than getting on the bicycle from the north I side because so. cool. there's so many steps in between i haven't fully tested it but also a bunch of menus here so we teach psychic Also, if anyone wants to have fun just like me, only put on your left ear. You hear one noise occasionally. It's really kind of funny to listen to. Also, we teach takedown here as well. The only way to reasonably take out psychic type Pokemon is with takedown and also swift. Both are extremely useful and viable and really valuable for this run itself. Unfortunately, we do un unlearn Bide, which, goodbye meme move, you are wonderful in every way possible. So this fight is, when I, I didn't realize when I was making it that Firo is a two shot and you have to actually have beer move gen one miss because the rival from this fight onwards has a thing called good AI. Good AI means that whatever move is super effective against the opponent or against you, it will always use that type of move. If it has two of those moves, it's going to be a coin flip between the moves. So if a Pokemon against a Nidoking had both Psychic and Psybeam, it would choose between those two moves, even if that move was agility, such mm. as the Pidgeot later on in the run. Interesting, and it thinks that mirror move is super effective on you? Because it's flying, and that's the oh. only flying move that it has. Ooh. So you have to mirror move into Psychic, which you just used, and get a Gen 1 miss with that, which I didn't realize when redoing this that I would need that. So that took a little bit longer to figure out and realize I got very grumpy at that point. But... Again, foreshadowing that the rival has good AI, and many Pokemon 
have a lot of diversity of moves, even though it may not always seem like it. So here, uh, it's very it's a very, very simple area. They only have Ghastlies and haunt Haunters. And you just use Psychic and Confusion. And it's really, really, really easy. <laughs> the funny thing is, is that these Ghastlies are actually, if I remember correctly, 38 out of 39 ranges, something close to that. I can look it up quickly. Let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. With Psychic, they are 36 out of 39 ranges, so a 93% chance to kill. It's the fact that I am using a Butterfree with a 90 base power move. That's super effective, and it's still a range on a Ghastly. So yeah, uh, here we have to be healed because the trainer facing the stairs over there is actually slower than if we didn't just take the heal pad there. And so we are going to lose red bar for some time, which is going to lose us a little bit of time in between each of these battles. But to get red bar for this whole next section would be a waste of time because of the fact that each ghastly at best would do... 24 damage with Nightshade at best, and that's about it. That's all they could really do, other than just be annoying with Confuse Ray or Hypnosis or something else. And so for all of the rest of Pokemon Tower, we do just keep Red Bar. We keep uh, no Red Bar, because we also center afterwards in order to get our Power Point management and have our Restore Point be Celadon City, which is going to be very important throughout the entire run. Also, I'm going to be honest, I never knew what, what fell out from that lady when she said something fell out. She never made any kind of sense with that. Although a lot of the Chandlers in this area never made any kind of sense. So here, because we picked up a Pokedoll, we used the Pokedoll glitch. Which, because the Marowak is counted as a wild Pokemon, this was quote-unquote intended and we are able to run away immediately and skip a lot of the or skip all of the rocket hideout in Celadon City and just go straight up to the Jesse and James fight here. Or the quote rocket fight. Not the ads. <laughs> I actually subscribed to PSR Marathon because of the fact that I was tired of seeing the ads every time I joined the stream. Let's go. And then every hour was five ads. Drop that is... Twitch Prime sub. <laughs> yeah, hint, hint. Drop, drop your Twitch Prime if you're tired of the ads. Not on me. Please. Please don't. <laughs> it's fine. Support PSR Marathon more. Also, we officially received the Poke Flute. Flute time. Also, Ranger, I'm disappointed that you're using the basic Gambat palette and not the Lib Retro palette. I don't know how to change that. I, I'll teach you later. <laughs> you have to teach me a lot of things since you're. It's more. You know, it's just... more accurate to the the game. Uh, the Game Boy Color is like color scheme, and it looks way better than the Gambat one. Okay. I've been trying to convince the the Bizhawk devs to change it as a default, but <laughs> alas. Also here, we go and bike all the way over to Snorlax. We get to listen to Cat Jam. To be honest, Mockwing, I didn't really close the stream at all this past weekend. <laughs> I only closed it when I slept. And we just immediately run from Snorlax.
And here we go and pick up the rare candy here, which is going to be very important very soon. And then we also wait for it. Pick up the PP up as well. Gotta have that. Gotta get those extra yep. couple uses of all those moves. Originally, we actually used the PowerPoint up on the on Hyperbeam because we needed one more in one specific section, and I didn't want to go and pick up a, another PP item for it. So I intended just to get that. Also here, because cutting trees in yellow is very slow, we go all the way around and it is much faster than cutting any of the trees. I tried every single path. <laughs> I really did. I tried cutting like seven trees, one tree, three trees. Tried everything. In the end, going around was the fastest way. That's of course only for yellow. Red and blue is uh, different. And yes, Jordan, I did close it when I slept because I didn't want the screen flashing while I was trying to sleep. Here we... Uh, actually, I don't even know what I did there. I think I used a PP up and you went on the bike. Here we manipulate all of the encounters not to ever happen. Because why would we want encounters? Encounters are just for uh, wasting time. Although something probably would be better than a Butterfree. Butterfree is pretty weak. Turn the screen off, you're right. And in here, all we do is uh, pick up the gold teeth and we get Surf as well. And here we dig out immediately and we go to a Celadon, which allows us to go and face Erica first. Erica, as expected by anyone, uh, because we have Psychic, this fight is really easy. The only thing to note is that on the Execute that we just fought, we used Takedown, which did bring us down a little bit in HP. This is very specific for the upcoming Koga's Gym, which you'll see a lot of really cool, interesting stuff happen. Uh, we have Bind Miss. Also, the Tangla is only a two shot by getting two crits, which does suck, but it's okay. The Weaving Bell and Gloom are the are one shots though. And that is Erica defeated. And here we fly to Fuchsia because we went to the Safari Zone and we have the Fly Point, which is faster than 
obviously biking there. And we bike straight over to the gym, which, funny enough, biking there with the TAS is much faster than walking it in a regular mode, or in the regular RTA run. Now, if you remember me saying foreshadowing about bulky psychic types, uh, welcome to Koga's gym. For some reason, everything but Koga has psychic types. Mm -hmm. And it's Drowsy's, and then one Kadabra. And, and we rush to... Koga's gym and Tass's because we want to get through the mansion as soon as possible. Yes. Where we, uh, we don't have to worry about the fact that Repel wouldn't work because our level is so low. Uh, with your first Pokemon in your party, their level mattering for... Like, it has to be higher than something to repel it. So that is, that matters a lot in the routing of Gen 1 for when you do the mansion. But it doesn't matter at all in the task because you're like you're just not using repels, you're just manipulating away all the encounters. Yep. And so here we're at 22 HP. We still need a little bit more HP off. However, Drowsy actually has a little bit too much HP, so we have to use Swift first and then take down in order to get <coughs> to 7 HP for Red Bart. I can tell you with all honesty that that fight alone took an excessive amount of time. It took more time than figuring out what Erica was and what Koga's fight were. The next trainer, however, is much e even more stupid in general. Uh, I don't like this guy. This guy is my least favorite trainer. Maybe, sorry, a little bit less than the Lightyear guy, because Lightyear guy is a nightmare. But this is probably my second least favorite trainer. My third least favorite trainer is coming up, though, very soon, which will be really fun to talk about. Also here, we're having Poison Gas Miss because it's so easy to make that miss, and but it failed. Text is very quick. And here comes the Hypno. So we actually have takedown so that we can actually deal some damage in order to get, I believe, that's a four-turn fight instead of just a th uh, five or six-turn. No, sorry, this, uh, yeah, three, three Swifts. This fight normally would be five or six turns at minimum if we were an is still at low HP. The best part is Koga is the easiest piece of cake in the entire world. I could fall asleep in here. Considering that he talks about sleep techniques, I think the sleep techniques are the fact that I could fall asleep while doing the TAS version of this fight. Even in the regular version, I could easily very well do this fight without any issues. Although you do need crits on the Venonets to make them one-shot, which is very annoying. Also because they're level 46, which is a huge upgrade to his team from the red and blue fight. Which I believe in those, he's level 40 and 42, if I'm not mistaken. Also here, we level up to level 34 and we learn Psybeam. And Psybeam is incredibly good. And I didn't realize that in my very first version of this run, that how good Psybeam was in general. Because Psybeam allows us to save a lot of power points over the entire run, when in points... I previously thought, okay, we just use Psychic and Psychic, and we don't use anything else. Well, it's actually really helpful. And that's Koga, by the way. He's very quick. Also, because we have a full inventory, we're going to be having a full inventory for every gym leader from now on. And that is because uh, we save quite a few text boxes if we have the gym leader say make space for this you don't have space for this blah 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 blah. the only trainer that i didn't do that for was erica because we had to use the pp up beforehand although in theory i could save some time by not using the powerpoint up there in order to uh prevent erica from giving it to us also we use an elixir there we teach surf to squirtle because we, ju we uh, just got it. We teach Strength. We teach Surf first, or uh, Surf in the first, in the second slot, and Strength in the first slot, because Strength will appear first on the move list when you are selecting Squirtle to pick an HM move. In later games, it's whatever I believe is first learns, 
if I'm not mistaken, or the order of the moves in general. And you can change that around, but in this game, you cannot change the order of the moves themselves, I don't believe. Also here, we go to Pal Town. And this little lass over here, she's really annoying. She didn't cooperate with me for quite a while when I was working on this. And here we surf. And we hold down for quite some time. <laughs> we do nothing else. Oh, sorry, we, we hit left click just for a second there. And we go down for a while. Listen to some nice surfing music. And then we get the mansion music, which is Cat Jam Central. I freaking love, like, this whole sequence of the water music and then into the mansion music. Yeah, I agree. Swag switch. Oh, yeah. I don't care how much time it loses, I will always use swag PCs it's and only, swag switches. It's only two frames. It's a speed entertainment trade off. Exactly. As we say in the business. Besides, it's playground. It's fine. Funny enough, actually, some of these um, swag switches are actually helpful to to um, get rid of the term frame afterwards because uh, afterwards we go right anyway. So it does save us, I believe, one frame, if anything, on some of these switch situations. Also, we pick up this rare candy and the other rare candy, all of which... We now have five rare candies in total. This will become very important in just a little bit. We have one more fight to do before the third least favorite trainer in this run. Now time to talk about why bulky fire type Pokemon are some of the stupidest Pokemon in this game. Uh, Arcanine is just bulky and annoying and very hard to, uh, oh, actually, sorry. These questions are actually really funny because Caterpie does not, by technicality, evolve into Butterfree. It evolves into Metapod, then Butterfree. But of course, wording-wise, it does eventually evolve into Butterfree. So I just wanted to, uh, comment on that with the quiz because it is wrong. And of course, this is true later on. No, sorry, it does it um because it could either evolve into Politoed or Polyrath for a Poliwag. But also no, because it only evolves into one of the two. And of course, Tombstoner. The best question ever. Uh, I wish they did make a move that was called Tombstoner. Didn't they change it to Tombstoney in the Let's Go remake? I think so. That was a fun one. Also, so Blaine requires four X specials and one X speed. Yes, you heard me. Four X specials and one X speed for Butterfree to get through this fight somewhat well. Also, Gen 1 missed Flamethrower. And the tail would fail. I found the Flamethrower Gen 1 miss within, like, four frames Ugh. of... A little fun little addition. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't not going to include any Gen 1 misses. I should have kept the counter up on how many I have. I never even counted. That's a great question. I think I have 20 in the whole run. Yeah, probably close to 20, if not 25. Because there's nine in Light Year Guide to fight. And there's. You're faster than that Rapidash, it looks like. Yes, because of the X speed. But then oh, we lose our badge. Boost from the Arcanine. Interesting. Also, we can only kill this Arcanine with a special drop at plus four. <laughs> so. The, the value. 
it was a crit special drop into a special drop uh, to, to uh, a range, I think. I don't remember the exact range, but. And of course, no room. We use dig. <sighs> now let's talk about good AI. Also, we're going to level up a few times here, up to level 40. We save one rare candy for inventory purposes. So, good AI in this game is any move that is super effective against you, the trainer, will be used no matter what. Whether that is a Nido King against a Pidgeotto and the Pidgeotto uses agility or Pidgeot, whatever. Uh, whether it's a fire type against a war type and the war type will always use war gun or bubble beam. Or in this case, a Butterfree against a Sand Slash. The Sand Slash has four moves, I believe. Slash, Sand Attack, Dig, and Poison Sting. Dig and Sand Attack. Sand Attack will hit, but it's a ground move, and ground is immune, is not effective against flying, so I won't use it. Dig, same situation. And Slash is neutral against both. But Poison is super effective against Bug in this generation. After this generation, um, that is not the case anymore. It's just neutral. So, and the only move Sand Slash has is Poison Sting for, to hit us. But Poison Sting is 100% accurate in this game. Except the Gen 1 miss. So while setting up for the upcoming fight, you have to have the Sand Slash Gen 1 miss quite a few times. And you think to yourself, okay, well, what about setting up on something else? Well, you still need at least one or two Gen 1 misses against Sand Slash in order to make it actually to like kill it because it doesn't die at one shot because sand slash is a stupid pokemon and butterfree is relatively weak compared to it so you think to yourself okay well i can set up against something else no because every pokemon including actually sorry everything but the kadabra has a super effective move against butterfree we're going to see that presented right here right now Welcome to, other than the late year guy, the other Gen 1 Miss shenanigans fight, as I call it. So we act special once. Poison Sting to hit to get to low HP. We act special twice. Find a Poison Sting a second and a half later. <laughs> yes, 90 frames roughly. Another Gen 1 Miss. So three act specials kill it, get the range, because of the badge boosts, or no badge boosts. Then, Psychic to kill the Magneton. Ninetales. Use Psybeam to get a crit. Ember Gen 1 miss into Psybeam crit again for the two-shot, because we need to save power points on Psychic. We lose our badge boosts. We use Swift on the Kadabra for a one-shot for with a crit, which is amazing. So we don't have to use takedown. And then we use Psychic, I believe, twice here. Yeah, special drop into Aurora Beam Gen 1 Miss. So I believe that was five or six Gen 1 Misses in that whole fight. This is the nicest version of the fight I have ever seen in my life. Uh, in the original, I believe we had six or seven Gen 1 misses in this fight alone. And that was with using Hyper Beam in the original version. So yeah. And of course we face against the Rockets, who are a joke compared to what we just had to do. And sorry about the little lag there. I was opening up a browser. And let's see. Also, as of this point, if we go to the Sylph Giovanni fight, um, 
when we finish up Giovanni himself, who's really, really simple, we are going to be, compared to our, our verified version of this run, 29,320 frames ahead, which is, I believe is roughly seven and a half minutes faster than the original, if my math is correct. I don't remember fully, but when we exited the fly house originally because of the fact that we had to do the game corner, we were 33,869 frames ahead. So we did lose quite a bit of time because we aren't using Hyperbeam, which does save a significant amount of turns because of its base power and the inability to recharge. But we are still consistently ahead by a long shot compared to our original task. And yeah, I'm not even going to really talk about Giovanni fight because it's one of the most simple fights to ever exist. Although this Nido Queen is quite bulky and very tanky, and so it does require a critical hit from Psychic to be able to one-shot it properly. And so after this, we only have actually two more gyms left. And then we have the Viridian Rival fight, and then the Elite Four, which is going to be really awesome. Uh, so Hyper Beam with the Game Corner, because you have to manipulate the Game Corner into giving you 300 coins every time, it still takes 9 to 10 minutes alone just to get Hyper Beam. And this is the version without Hyper Beam. And we're seven and a half minutes faster, even with our time losses in general. With uh, Koga, we were we lost 1,600 frames just in that section of the run. Even with that, we are still significantly faster in many ways. So yes, while Hyper Beam is a wonderful, wonderful meme, it is very slow and very just not effective. If, if there you're was looking a faster for way... speed, Hyper Beam is not there. If you're looking for and the most amazing nine minutes of manipulating the game corner of your life, Hyper Beam's awesome. Yes, and listening to the coin sound in your right ear for hours and hours because you're manipulating the coins. Which, by the way, up until I did that game corner run, the the manipulating of the game corner, only one other person really had looked into it, and it was about uh, five or six years ago. Also, if you notice that we centered after beating Blaine, it was because we needed full HP to use takedown on all three of uh, Sabrina's Pokemon, and the reason why was because they are psychic types, they're not weak to psychic, and so using takedown would be significantly faster in general. And um, but yeah, Hyper Beam is very slow in general. If there was any kind of faster way to actually do it, I would be glad to get it any day of the week. Um, oh, also, forgot to mention, we actually have the Alakazam uh, use Psy Wave on us and manipulate the amount of damage it does with it in order to get to 2 HP after the end of the fight, while saving many turns instead of having to use Swift or something else. Or, because Hyper Beam would be the fastest way, but with Takedown, you're not going to get Red Bar from just Takedowning all three Pokemon. So you need a little bit more damage from the Alakazam, which can be easily manipulated by Psy Wave because it does one to one and a half times the user's level. And since Alakazam, I believe, is level 54, that would be 79 points of damage. So one to 79 damage, and you can easily find that eventually in the run. Also, while I was doing this section of the run, which I only did about a week ago, I thought that going on the spinny tiles was going to be faster. But then I remembered that going backwards on uh, through the area was going to be very, very slow. Going through it the first time is really quick. Afterwards, though, it's much slower, which Kevin did confirm that he also had the same idea as me and had the same rise in excitement and disappointment at the same time. And here we have the Black Belt Trainer, who is normally notorious for also killing runs in both yellow and red runs.
But here, because we are a Pokemon with a psychic move, uh, we destroy everything in the world. And yeah, we level up here also level 44, which is very important for the upcoming section in general. Um, the Machops are a joke. The Machop is a joke and the Machokes are a joke as well. They just need a crit side beam. That's it. And we're trying to save power points on Psychic because we need it for Giovanni coming up. Which, honestly, this fight is... I, I want to look into it a little bit more. But that's just me. So here we exit, we re-enter, and every single trainer is reset back to their original position. Which is faster than going on those spinning tiles in the background. The spinning tiles are extremely and excessively slow in this game compared to Fire Red Leaf Green or even Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee because those make the games actually a little bit faster to run. And after Giovanni, we actually only have six trainers left to fight before the end of this run. Which is incredible to think about. Also, we have a Fisher Miss, which I love doing. Santac failed. Santac fail, which that one took a long time to find. Fissure unaffected, because we are now faster than it. Uh, it will say unaffected instead of attack missed. And this Persian, ex without the X items and the badge boosts, is a not even a range with Psychic. So, which is why that level up at level 44 there was really important because just after the Persian we can one shot everything else after we get to level 45 and lose lose our badge boosts and just so everybody knows for the future i will be working on two other versions of this task the first one will be a version utilizing, instead of Swift, Mega Drain, which we normally pick up in Erica's gym. This is to manipulate our HP much, much more using both Mega Drain and Takedown, and going up and down and up and down in our HP, but allows us to continuously use Takedown on some of the Psychic types, as well as use Mega Drain on some of the bulky Pokemon that could pose a problem. For example, Lorelei Slowbro in the Elite Four is really tough without Mega Drain. Uh, a certain X item count, I believe you can easily two shot it with Mega Drain, but you would need to um, you would need to have Mega Drain, and Mega Drain also restores HP, which is quite slow in general. And yes, also good. Idea. Yeah, he doesn't have anything um, in general to hit us with, so therefore it just uses a random move. Also, once again, we have Gen 1 misses. Because why not, right? More Gen 1 misses. Two of them. And we never see Poison Sting from that Slam Slam Slide there because of Nido King being Poison type, so usually we wouldn't see that, but here yep. Butterfree does not have the Poison type, so... And because, no, Butterfree is bug flying, but it's weak to poison. And also Execute will use Poison Powder here only because it is um, a poison move, I believe, or it's a grass type, but. So, what's it called? Uh, we only go to plus three on the Sand Slash because we are able to kill it at that range and we didn't want to deal with Gen 1 misses from it. And so we switch to the Execute, who only has Poison Sting or Poison Powder to hit us with and it is very easy to manipulate into missing instead of wasting 30 40 frames just to find a gen 1 miss so here we continue to go and go and go fun fact the swift here once again is a crit with the badge or sorry it's a two shot actually i forgot that that was a two shot here we level up we lose our, lose our badge boosts we get the vaporeon and i believe once again we do a psychic Missed into a psychic, which should kill. Yep, it's a very, very low range on that Vaporeon itself, and we are officially five trainers left. So the Elite Four itself is 
it starts off extremely rough into great and great and okay and rough. That is the order. So Bruno and Agatha are very, very easy. Although Agatha can be an annoyance more so than anything. And you will see in the Agatha fight two turns where I do purposely lose time because I wanted to get this version of the run done before the marathon. And I didn't want to spend six hours of my non-existent time that I have looking for two Gen 1 misses while setting up on the Gengar against Agatha. So we do, in theory, lose time because of that. And that is okay, because I can find that time later on. So I will talk about that when we get there. For now, let's just enjoy the bicycle theme, or while the Victory Road theme into the bicycle theme, because we have the Victory Road section. Also, I did not do any swag boulders, unfortunately. I'm sorry, I am not any fun, I know. I wish I could be more fun, like Kevin, who can just do anything <laughs> he wants. I have to say, moving these boulders is one of the most irritating things possible when working on the task, because finding the frame that it's you can start moving again is excruciatingly annoying. Just a minor inconvenience in general. Also, you will see little delays here and there. That's because we are manipulating A presses on various tiles in order to avoid encounters in general. Squirtle is very strong indeed. I agree. Yeah, Left Ear is uh, having a fun time right now with these uh, boulders. And we are almost out of Victory Road. If you remember from before, we were about 29,320 frames. When we exit Victory Road, we are going to be 27,375 frames uh, ahead of our previous one, which does put us a little bit farther behind, but that's because Sabrina was a lot slower because we centered and uh, we didn't use Hyper Beam. And also exiting Victory Road, we did, uh, we did do a menu, which we normally would do in the Elite Four, but that is okay. And here we are, Swag PC again, because why not? Always love it. We also de we also deposit all of our Pokemon because we don't need them. We don't need Pokemon. We just need a Butterfree. If this would be a solo challenge on YouTube. Can you beat Pokemon Yellow with just a Butterfree? Well, a robot and, can. And perfect inputs. <laughs> and perfect inputs. I should actually name that ti the title of the video. 
Can you beat Pokemon Yellow with just a Butterfree and perfect inputs? <laughs> I actually really like that title. <laughs> Alright, welcome to one of the most irritating fights of all time, Dugong. So we just manipulate to have rest. It's really easy. Also a Gen 1 Miss Aurora Beam because I found it very early on. Take down Miss too. Because I could. And into Psychic, which I believe is a one-shot. Yes, they are. Oh, Aurora Beam, sorry. Uh, that was a take... I didn't see what that was. Don't know that was take down Aurora Beam. Cloyster is very easy because special-wise, it's not that good. Not we also level up, lose it. the badges. Uh, no, because we can... For some reason... Also, we get a special drop on that. Gen 1 Miss Psychic from Slowbro into a Slowbro kill with Psychic. Um, so, funny enough, we did I did find a few frames where it will use Rest more often than using Aurora Beam. Also, another Gen 1 Miss Ice Punch. And another Gen 1 Miss with Ice Punch. <laughs> yeah, this whole fight is just Gen 1 Miss and Prey. Also, Blizzard is not 100% accurate. Uh, no, I cannot. Unfortunately, I will not do that for you. No matter how much money you throw at me. I would never do that. Will we get through Lorelei very, very quickly? Uh, I'll do a Jinx impression if you want. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> You're cutting it a tiny bit there, but... Yeah, you were cutting it out there too, it sounded great. Um, so here's Bruno. It's not hard. Other than the mod champ, everything else dies to Psybeam because this Elite Four trainer is so hard for a uh, Pokemon with a Psychic move. But we are almost done. For uh, Jinx Cry fans, I have a video on my YouTube where I've superimposed several of Kizaron's Jinx Cries on top of oh, each other. Oh boy, I haven't seen that. I gotta find that. It used to be Damn. every Kizaron Jinx Cry, but there have been several since then. Okay, so here comes the part where I do lose some time, and yes, I know I will find the time later. Don't worry, Kevin. <laughs> so here we elixir that's actually needed no matter what because we use so many psychics uh, and we actually so the reason why I just ignored it was because Gengar has five options it can do it can use substitute it can switch out it can use lick confuse ray or mega drain confuse ray lick and mega drain all have 100% accuracy and so you have to Gen 1 miss it. Uh, it's T.I. Kevin 83. Yes, that is my handle. T.I. Kevin 83. And also, we had the Gengar confuse us because I didn't want to look for the Gen 1 miss for that. And so I just went with it and I immediately was unconfused the next turn. So it was very easy to manipulate. So that is a section where you could easily get a like Mega Drain Gen 1 miss into Mega Drain Gen 1 miss and save a lot of time. But because of the fact that I only had two weeks to finish this version of the task, I did speed it up a little bit. So I do lose some amount of time. But funny enough, compared to the original version, I saved 92 frames on this version, which is kind of funny. <laughs> and Agatha's done. That's the only section where I know I can save a lot more time because I can find a better version of the fight with more misses in general. Um, I definitely want to do a count of how many Gen 1 misses I find in the world. The funny thing is, while I look for Gen 1 misses, sometimes I find my own Gen 1 misses before I find any others. 
And I think I found a total of three or four of my own Gen 1 misses while doing this version of it. So here is Lance, and previously Lance could be a pain, but I found a way while routing, while, while doing this version, that was just significantly faster. So here we just have it fail Leer, miss Hydro Pump, mainly miss Leer because it's a lot faster, miss Hyper Beam because it's not 100% accurate. That's so Once nice that it's not locked into hyper or, or hydro pumping you. Even then, we could just miss it, but yeah, exactly. For. Uh, yeah. More like 400 D4s, or 256 of them. <laughs> and hope for the one <laughs> spot that doesn't have a D4 on it. Or hope for that spot. So the Aerodactyl normally is actually a two-shot, but because of the badge boost that we have, we're actually able to kill it in one shot. And we level up immediately after, which was a saving grace of this run. The Dragonite is a two-shot in which we have it miss Fire Blast, because Fire Blast would look really funny to see, be like, oh my god, that's a Fire Blast, and, but it misses, so we're safe. Oh, thank you, Hollyan. <laughs> I totally knew that. Um... So now, we have the champion fight. Uh, in all seriousness, there is a tiny bit of epilepsy warning because uh, Psychic is a little bit flashy. So if you are in any way epileptic or any kind of sensitive to just like flashing screens, please, I would look away and just listen. Yeah, the uh, animations get forced turned back on for the final fight. Yes, uh, everything RNG is, if you even, in, in, uh, delay everything by one frame 3,000 frames earlier, it changes the entire uh, delay of everything. Or yeah, Carissa, to be RNG. precise about what you're asking, uh, the RNG is determined on a cycle-based counter, which is very, very precise. So basically anything that you change, not just necessarily delaying frames, will cause different RNG. Unlike later gens, for instance in Gen 3, where the RNG is advancing to a specific number that's predetermined by like a essentially like a you could call it like a rainbow table you like you you know what numbers it can spit out in, in a sequence that's not necessarily the same way with gen one like it, it you can you can change your inputs at previous times to force basically any rng to happen so you're noticing in this that we're having sand slash hit moves and miss moves at the exact same time or like at different turns this is because the badge boost that you get from each of the different x items increases and decreases or sorry it decreases the damage slowly that poison sting does to you we manipulate sand slash into hitting us down all the way to 80 hp with just poison sting for the sake of the upcoming pokemon alakazam we use Psybeam so that we can, and then Kinesis fails, into Takedown for the sake of the next Pokemon. We get to 56 HP. Sorry, we go to 59. And then after this, we use Takedown because we are at plus 4 attack, or plus 3. We go down to 35 HP. And then we have Stomp Miss into a takedown kill into 11 HP, which gives us red bar for the rest of the fight. The uh, If we didn't use takedown, this fight would be at least four to five more turns because either using Swift, Psychic, or Psybeam. Fire Spin Miss. And... Uh, Magneton, I believe, is a... Uh, it is 31. I believe. Also, special drop into Gen 1 Miss Thunderbolt, which was really fun to find. Um, yeah, you have uh, to generally be under about, like, 20.7% of your uh, total HP. It's a little bit higher than 20%. Yep. 
Also, Psychic, uh, Special Drop, no, sorry, no, no Special Drop, Mist. I believe it's a three shot or a two shot, I'm not sure which one in this. I think I just kind of finished and went with the day. Yep, so Mist fails because it already used it. And that is the run. I will let you know, Iron, when to say time. It's not time yet, but... Oh, I'm not in control of the timer. I'm not sure how to do that. Oh. Who's in charge of the Andy. timer? Time oh, is Andy, on the last input because tasks, so... Yep. So... Exactly Black like Obelisk, yeah. It's a 48 is... pixel HP bar, so it's 10 pixels or less is red bar. So I've known what the final time is this whole time. I just haven't said it because I like to keep surprises. Um, this was ahead of my current task by if anyone wants to do the math. The final time is going to be a one hour, 49 minutes and 36 seconds. The original time was a one hour, 56 minute and 22 second time. If anyone wants to do the math for that, feel free to calculate the difference. I don't remember. And Jay the Butterfree. And 146 in game time. Time. Yep, time. But yeah, that is the test. Um, I'm really, really happy considering that I've only worked on task stuff for about uh, a year and four months total time. If you don't count two of those months of rage quitting from the light year trainer fight the first time I did it, uh, <laughs> then a year and just two months. And when I say that I rage quit for two months, I genuinely rage quit for two months. But uh, yeah, this was a lot of fun in general. And the timer's still going, but that's okay. Doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, do, you need to be, do you need to get the computer to do that? Or. I mean, I can yeah. do it really quickly. Yeah, because you've, you've done tech. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you uh, for around. inviting me on for the commentary, Ranger Squid. I'm excited to do it. Thank you so much for providing so much. I really like the insight yeah. that you provided. So I'm mm -hmm. really happy about that. Yeah, thank you both but, for um, showing off a really impressive uh, of tasks of a very unconventional uh, <laughs> uh, alt main. But uh, it's really, really cool what kind of the stuff you can do with uh, with the tasks. Yeah. Uh, and software and capabilities, absolutely. If you would like to follow me for any future task work I may stream or any other speed runs I do, uh, Ranger Squid on Twitch. I also want to thank... Uh, the custom starter group that we have in our group chat, Mr. Two, Switch, Norms, Casual Pokey Player, Head Bob, Poi, everybody for just literally mentally supporting me while I work on this and while I scream in agony at Gen 1 misses. And so I want to thank them. I want to thank Kevin because Kevin saved me during this whole run and everything. And he's awesome. <laughs> Thanks. And yes, Ed Bob, I know you're just kind of there, but you do enjoy the chats at least. <laughs>